Oh, oh go. Hello. Hello. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. I'm your host, Victor. Today I'm joined by a returning host, Savannah. Hello. It's been a few episodes. How it's you been done? a few. I've been doing really good. I've been playing a lot of D&D, DMing, playing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. What have you been playing lately? You skipped. I'm sorry. I have a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got ahead of it. <laughs> Playing a lot of D and D. Okay, yeah. okay. DMing, playing. What are you doing? Both. Yes. Yes. Yes is the answer. Yes, I okay. do. I have like five campaigns. All right. <laughs> you, do they should remember that from last episode? Maybe more. What is your mo- one of your most memorable moments from recent session? Oh dear. Recent campaign. Um, probably the one that I'm DMing that you're playing in. <laughs> I know there's two, but uh, yes. the one with with Tamra. Um, uh, the whole issue with the guest <laughs> that we had yeah, yeah. who betrayed the group. Yeah, that's that was right. very memorable. Very memorable. <laughs> uh, we learned a lot. What's mm-hmm. a good memorable? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot. How about you? Me? Mm-hmm. I Let really, me think I really liked our last session. We hadn't played those characters oh, in yeah. like six months yeah. or something crazy mm-hmm. like that. The other one that I DM. And I'm playing a dwarf paladin, which I've never played a dwarf or a paladin before. So that was really, mm-hmm. it's really fun. And I'm playing them in a way that's a lot different. And this last session, all three of our characters had never touched snow before. Oh, it's, had yes. never been to a snow biome. And that was where the session took us. We were all going kind of snow crazy. Yeah, it, it's, they got caught Thank in a blizzard. You. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> got caught in a blizzard and kept rolling really bad. Really bad. On our perception checks, getting lost in a blizzard. So. Good thing you found a cave. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so. All righty. Okay, okay. So, we're talking about D&D. We are talking about D&D, but you didn't give me a good. You didn't tell me a... <laughs> Something good that stands out to you from a recent session. Um, I mean, I think last session that you were just talking about was a lot of fun because I had nothing planned. Absolutely wow. not. Because giving away the DM secrets. Yeah, the DM secrets is uh, sometimes you just you don't play for six months and then you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> for real, for real. I had to recalibrate my mm-hmm. character for that one. Um, I just liked everything in the cave. I liked all the role playing. Uh. And, and you simping? <laughs> yes, this character is definitely a simp because uh, I don't play that way. So I'm like, let's do it on this. Let's do it on a character. Let's see how it goes. But why are we talking about D and D today? Because we're learning how to, we're learning and teaching how to create a character mm-hmm. from scratch. <laughs> from scratch, <laughs> yeah. And this is a continuation of episode 15. We started doing this at the end, the bottom of the hour, mm-hmm. about 10 minutes. Ron and I said, you know, let's come back to this. Yeah. Right? So. 10 minutes is not enough time. It's not enough time. An hour might not be enough time. Well, we're going to get we're through gonna it. We're going to try. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're done fluffing. We told okay. our stories. Yeah. Uh, but the reason the reason for this is it's we want to provide you the tips, tricks, secrets of beginning to end on how to make a character. This would be good for new players. And so if you're coming from that first episode, which we recommend, this will yes. help you and old players on how to teach new players to mm-hmm, make characters. Mm-hmm. And so this also will be set up as a precursor to episode 30 yes. through probably 33 because we're going to be playing for our first time on the show. Yeah, I won't be there. You won't be there. I won't be there, but I will be some was. NPCs. Maybe. You can make some guest appearances. Yeah, I might. But <laughs> it's going to be uh, Ron. Ron's going to be our DM. If you remember, if you've seen the first episode, Ron's going to DM. Mm-hmm. It's going to be me, Xander, Anna. We're going to be the players yeah. in the game. It's uh, super excited to start that. Cool. get Kaylee on, too. That'd be awesome. But yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. And then the goal there is every 15 episodes, continue that session. Yeah, it's going to be so D&D. 45, 60, 75, 90. Stop me. <laughs> we're going to go. We're going to go. Forever. We're going to try For to as long play as that. Can. So <laughs> this is uh, the time to plug here. Yeah. Check, go to Instagram, subscribe to us there, because we're posting funny videos, and we're going to post as soon as you know that they, those videos are coming out, those yes. gameplay videos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that's just at Shared Discovery Show. You can find us at Shared Discovery on YouTube. We're working on migrating our videos to our own YouTube so we yes. can start posting bonus Game bonus play. content yes yeah. yes because we have we did a practice session mm-hmm. practice one shot that i dm with xander and anna and so that we're going to put there so check us out there and if you have any questions or advice on how yes. to make a character email us at shared discovery show at gmail.com okay plugging over we got a show we did, we're doing we got to get into this but we have 
like with every episode, we have some disclaimers. Yes. So let me, I'll take this, right? And I think we already talked about this disclaimer. Mm. Just go back. We recommend yeah. go back and check out episode 15. Just to get a general feel of like, what is the game of Dungeons and Dragons? That's really what that episode's all about. Yeah. What, what is the game? What are these definitions, these acronyms? Like how to learn the rules, how to yes. use these rule books. So we recommend that as a starting point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The next bullet point here, I think this is a good one for you to take. Oh. As the DM. Talk to your DM. Mm-hmm. So it's very important to talk to your dungeon master or DM um, mm-hmm. throughout the process of making a character. Where do I look? <laughs> <laughs> because you can create a character in a vacuum, but it's really important to know the setting and the story that your DM has planned so that it fits and you don't have to scrap a really good idea. Yeah, it can be really frustrating. You made this character without consulting them. They yes. say that doesn't work. So at, that doesn't really make sense. That doesn't work at all. And yeah. Oh, man. It's like, but if you're working <laughs> with them along the way, they might say, instead of scrapping, they may say, Let's hey, just tweak this. Yeah, mm-hmm. tweak, change it just a little bit. So... Keep that in mind as we go through these eight steps. Yes. This is probably step zero, I would say. Mm -hmm. Step zero, talk to your DM and keep that in mind throughout all of the steps here. We didn't do the intro question. And now (laughs) we're going to do the intro question. You had a question for me. Yes. Yeah, we didn't do it because we switched them. Yeah. What? You see the arrow on your page? (laughs) I do. That's why I'm reminding you. (laughs) So what character, show, or otherwise has inspired you to make a D&D character? Mm, Yeah, a lot. First one that comes to mind is Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. I, we were watching the original Dragon Ball with Kid Goku, Kid watching Goku's him grow up, and I used a lot of his personality and his creativity in fighting mm-hmm. and his like, his, like I- ideals yeah. for protecting people and silliness, things like that. I used for one of my monks, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so that that's like one of the first one that comes to mind. How about you? Um, I used. Just like the whole concept of Bloodborne, the mm, game, um, mm-hmm. to make like the spooky detective girl uh, who uh, is also in, in Magic the Gathering. There's like a commander card that is basically just her. She's a detective mm. who investigates the supernatural. So you got inspired by Bloodborne combined with magic, yeah. that art style. Yes. Uh, another thing, immediately in pre-show, we talked about Castlevania. Yeah. Just so much of that we, we've Has been able to draw us. off of. Mm-hmm. Like, Alucard is a sword mage, which for those of you that don't know, someone who fights telekinetically by controlling swords, using psychic powers. Mm-hmm. So that I've made a character directly like yes. that because I've always liked that trope. But uh, why are we talking about media and shows because the first step into getting creating a character is to have an idea mm, so step one yes step one have an idea so D D is a fantasy role-playing game in which you have a unique character that you role play throughout the course of a campaign mm-hmm. and what kind of character do you want to play yeah. is really where the jumping off this point is step is. one mm-hmm. right we're saying we watch the show we liked that idea that's what you need yes. have an idea and we're gonna that's the inspiration flesh it out mm-hmm. on this character sheet that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna get an inspiration we're gonna flesh it out so what is your inspiration for today oh man you know some of the inspirations you had here oh, you yeah. had like a swordsman a powerful mage we talked about mm-hmm. like monks and yes. personalities that we like Maybe a silly musician and <laughs> i like what you said here in the notes the only limit is your imagination yes. yeah. but sometimes Whatever you could think we're of. not that creative but other people are so steal mm-hmm. from them for yes. me so <laughs> this actually comes from last episode the inspiration that i drew was from lord of the rings mm-hmm. we had been watching lord of the rings and i really liked gimli yes so I said, okay, I'm going to make Gimli. So I have a start here. I got the name and the obviously the race and the class figured out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Gimli's a, a dwarf. He's a dwarf. And he's, 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 he's a, a mountain fighter. dwarf specifically, <laughs> and he's a fighter. So today um, we're going to be fleshing out Rurik Distra, and Rurik is going to be largely inspired by Gimli. Mm-hmm. And so this... Inspiration I took direct from a movie, but it can come from anywhere. It can become, come from a TV show, a different board game, like a, a video game. You talked about magic. You yeah. talked about Bloodborne. So video games, TV shows, favorite character, mm-hmm. friends. Yeah, uh, just your friends. Life, family, whatever inspires mm-hmm. you, you start there. Right? Like, I really like plants, so my favorite class is Druid. Because mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. want to be a nature person. <laughs> yeah, and we talked about in the first episode how... 
learning the rules and going through the rule book uh, in the way that we recommend can also be a way to inspire you. Yes. Because you can learn things yeah. you didn't even know you could do with the game. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that is also a way to get inspired. But today we're going to be focusing on Gimli. And we're, that's step one. We have our idea. You have the inspiration. So now, step two. Step two. So a little caveat oh, yeah. here is... The disclaimer about these steps. These steps are going to vary depending on who teaches you. This might even look a little bit different than, than what chapter the one book. of the book guides you, how it guides you through. But we really liked this order. You specifically liked this order. So things might change depending on where yeah. your inspiration comes. These next steps might switch up a little bit. That's okay. This is just an order that we like and mm -hmm. we recommend. Uh, so step two choose your class yeah and choosing your class it can come directly from your inspiration or the it, class itself could the, be your inspiration it could be your inspiration or it fills the need of what you want to role play yeah. right so a class to just to define it broadly describes a character's vocation what special talents they possess and the tactics they are most likely to employ when adventuring yeah so page one page one done chuck it <laughs> I like checking it like that. So, I believe, I guess I could just say this, I think the class is arguably one of the most important things because it dictates how you're going to play the game mm. in social situations, in combat. All of the skills come from the class, and that's what you're going to use. Yep, this is the mechanical core of the game, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? What can your character do that the abilities in the book say? Yes. So, this is really important that I'm just gonna open up the book. If you're gonna be a fighter, right? If you your character, your inspiration uses a sword and charges into combat, it's not gonna make sense to be a wizard. No. <laughs> right. So well, this is why we're starting here. We think mechanics. This is the uh, a concept, a design concept called bottom up, where you start mm. with mechanics and then you build into flavor. Yeah. Right. All oh, and. Or you could argue that we're starting with flavor and then building yeah. into mechanics top off down. that, but they all wrap into each mm -hmm. other, which is top down. Uh, so we got 12 classes that are in the player's handbook. These are the core classes. There are more that you can find online, but this we're gonna we're gonna focus on these 12 today. And these are split up into different classifications. So the first classification that I'll talk about are the martial classes. There are four of them, and they all focus on up close combat with a weapon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and or utilizing a weapon to its fullest yes. because some of these will use a bow not yeah. up close for that but utilizing weapons to the fullest mm -hmm. and these physically attacking physically some attacking way. someone and then these are going to be your barbarians your raging fighter uh your raging warriors yeah. and then your fighters which are more tactical more like soldiers mm -hmm. who can use any weapon to their fullest the monk who meditate and punch really hard kick and f draw their chi to punch better the rogue who might use bows or daggers and be mm -hmm. more stealthy and try to hit all you about backstabbing backstab hitting you in specific points mm -hmm. right and like you said they're meant to be in the thick of the fight but their abilities rarely impact social situations yeah. right there, there's there's some nuance to that but we say rarely in comparison to the next types of classes. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> the next category are the casters. So the casters use magical spells and abilities to either deal damage, take control of the battlefield, or manipulate social situations in their favor. Hmm. And these include the bard, cleric, druid, sorcerer, warlock, and wizard. There's, There's a, lot, a of, lot of them a because of magic's cool. <laughs> magic's cool. People like magic. We can't oh, do probably, that in real yeah. life. Mm -hmm. I can be a barbarian in real life. Yeah, that's true. You rage often. <laughs> I can rage. I can rage. I do. <laughs> so these classes rely on their spells in and out of combat. That means they're going to have more tricky ways mm -hmm. in social situations to charm people yeah. or influence them to mm -hmm. do things. Like, and let's be friends, magic spell. That maybe a barbarian <laughs> wouldn't. No. Right? They're not going to have abilities that help friend them or help them work with animals, things yeah. like that. Um, where a barbarian's just going to yell at you and, <laughs> and intimidate you. And, and probably just to, hit you. <laughs> try to work, right? Uh, and then there is a last... There's like a subcategory sub of here. both of them, which are called half-casters. Mm. Um, and these are split from the first two, so they do both martial and 
and spellcasting, <laughs> and they are the paladin and the ranger. So they're mostly physical attackers, but use magic to enhance their ability in some way. Yeah, and it's with the casters, they all get their magic from different means. Yes. Right, so this can play into as you your inspiration. Does it make sense to be a warlock because you're getting you made a deal with some some other entity. Other entity. Well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, let me scrap the warlock. That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Well, I you, you, I get it more from nature. That's a druid, yeah. right? That's gonna, you're going to lean into the druid. So again, reading through those classes, yes. just the descriptions mm-hmm. can help inspire you there. Uh, so we wanted to go through those, and obviously, step two for Gimli is a fighter. We already yes. said that. So that's the fighter. You got us on the fighter page, right? Mm-hmm. And I wrote that down. We'll save that for later once we fill in the nitty gritty. But step three is choosing a background. Where is this? And again, like we said, sometimes your inspiration is a background. Um, so a character's background is kind of like their backstory. In the player's handbook, there are several uh, to choose from to help flesh out your character. Um, Shush. Getting a little distracted here by. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Hey, so. Please. Sorry, uh, a little <laughs> bit of distraction there from our uh, set director <laughs> singing. I'm glad that they like their Metallica, but a little distracting. Uh, okay, so, back on track here. Back the background, on the choosing background. the background. This is to help you flesh out your character. Yes. There's a number of them in the player's handbook. Uh, you might be a soldier that has a knack for strategy and the environment, which today is going to be Gimli. So that I'm going to go, go ahead and write that down yes. right now. And so. You might be a noble, Mm. you might be a criminal, an entertainer, a hermit, and what these backgrounds do are essentially to help with your role playing. Yeah, and help with your inspiration. Like, they have this nice little summary Mm -hmm. here that tells you, like, what it's all about, and, you know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so, you, something, a little nuance I want to make here is inspiration is a mechanic, that's a, it's a little uh, point that yeah. the DM can give you if you're playing your character well. And when we say inspiration, we're more so referring to the idea, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if yeah, players so are, you're getting confused about that. It's more so your, This can give you an idea of how idea. to build your So we're character. using those words interchangeably. Yeah. Uh, but when you look at your background, whatever it may be, you're looking for... Um, these four different attributes, characteristics, which is on the front page of the character sheet, and it's going to be the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. And you already turned to the soldier page yes. here for me. Thank you. But so now we're go- going to think about and try to fill in these boxes mm-hmm. with our idea with Gimli yes. and in conjunction with this guy. And something you wanted to put here is that. Everything Everything on this page is optional. It is optional. It's to help get you started. Yeah, it's uh, it's a jumping off point. So it has a little chart here that talks about like the different personality traits you can choose from. But you could also just put in your own thing that Mm -hmm. is not on this page. Exactly. So I might be getting some from this page, but for me, I'm thinking about Gimli. Okay, personality. What is uh, Gimli's personality? He's very loud. Loud. (laughs) He. Would I say abrasive? Kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. He um, he knows what he wants. <laughs> mm-hmm. Would that be an ideal? Yeah, probably. Loud, abrasive, brash. There you go. I was stuck on that word. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And then his ideals are like what he believes in, what mm. he wants to do. And what he wants to do is good. And he wants to protect mm-hmm. Pro- he protect, wants to help save the world. <laughs> protect others. Mm-hmm. Save the world. Okay. Yeah, because that's the main story of Lord of the Rings. It's like mm-hmm. the world's ending. And he, you you said this in the pre-show. He's like, he's the first one. Yeah. To... Of his dwarves in the um, in the council of El- Elrond mm-hmm. to stand up and say, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to help do this. Mm-hmm. And so like that is a strong... He's so confident and helping Mm -hmm. and confidence. Yeah, put that in personality. Confidence (laughs) is a personality trait. So Mm -hmm. his bonds. What are his bonds? His bonds bonds are 
they're like what keep you grounded. So it would be his family, his uh, his lineage, his people, his devotion to life itself, to mm. protecting mm-hmm. others. Mm. Nice. <laughs> okay, and then some of his flaws. What do you think? He's a little elf racist, at least in the beginning. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> he is extremely stubborn. I think we could change that. Not change that, but also say that slow to trust. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And then... Stubborn, you said? Yeah, there is um, a flaw on here that is perfect. I'd rather eat my armor than admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is so perfect. Stubborn. That describes him perfectly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially He's a bit temperamental. <laughs> temperamental, yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And right. competitive? I don't know if that's a flaw or just a personality trait. And then up at the top of the page, there is a box that has class level background player name race alignment and experience points so right now while we're working on the background i just wrote soldier up yes there. just just to remind you mm-hmm. and like i said these are optional if you want to create your own kind of background for your backstory mm-hmm. work with your dm to one get you all of these kinds of abilities that the background will give mm-hmm. you and just just work with your dm to Absolutely. make it fun to make and it something fit. another tip is like the sheet's a lot, and this book's yes. a lot. So I, what I like to do is just put the page number. Yeah. So page 140, mm-hmm. right? We can come back here. And what you'll see in all of these backgrounds is they'll have the skill proficiencies. And so right here it says athletics, intimidation. Yes. That means you're going to add your proficiency bonus when you roll for that skill. Mm-hmm. So when you have one of these, So yeah, you're just go... as a reminder, just you fill in the bubble on this sheet and then... Mm-hmm. Figure it out after we get the yes. numbers. Yes. So I, just to remind us, when, when for when we get into the nitty gritty, I'm going to fill in this bubble next to athletics. Just darken that. So mm-hmm. later I know. Okay, that bubble's there. I am proficient. I'm in proficient. This. I will add that bonus. Mm-hmm. And then intimidation. intimidation, which is kind of funny, <laughs> because like because wa- watching. The movie, I'm like, I don't think Gimli's that intimidating. I mean, he tried. But I could see him being intimidating on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And then we have two proficiencies, and that's going to actually be down in the bottom left-hand corner of the front page of the characters. There's a tiny little box here, and it's called Other Proficiencies and Languages. So what I'm going to do right now is it says one type of gaming set and vehicle. So I'll say uh, chess set or something just for now. And then a vehicle. So that means when I am draw, drawing a carriage. Yeah, like a carriage a, and a cart. A cart. Mm-hmm. I'm, I have experience with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're better at using it than others. And that's, I think that's the background. That's, that's what pretty we much it. Yep. We have the page to remember if we need to come back You also back get here. starting equipment, but we're not going to go into that right now. <laughs> and so, yeah. And then, then the last thing on edge, there's starting equipment. And sometimes it doesn't make sense with your background. So, like, there's an... And insignia of rank. That doesn't really make a lot of sense Gimli for Gimli. is like kind of, isn't he like a prince or something? Something like that. He, he doesn't exactly have a rank. Um, He's just a well-worn soldier. <laughs> but this kind of makes sense. A trophy taken from a fallen enemy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that could be a dagger, broken blade, something like An that. An ear. A set of bone dice, a deck of cards. That makes sense for a soldier. There's a lot of downtime. Yeah, a downtime. And then a pouch of ten, 10 gold, right? See, that does actually matter for your starting equipment, knowing how much money you mm-hmm. have to work with as you start playing yes. the game. And so this equipment, you're going to fill in just to the right of that other proficiency box. There's just, there's an equipment box yeah. there. And um, I am sorry to Anna in the studio. We forgot to remind <laughs> you to highlight these because we didn't realize it either. <laughs> okay, so what is the next... Uh, thing yes. here if we don't like the background in the book i already sort of st- uh, talked about how do that. we get alternate um working with your dm um there are a bunch online that you can mm-hmm. choose from um there's a bunch online my favorite website to use is the dnd wiki dot because it just has everything that has been published it has a lot of homebrew stuff and you can homebrew your own things that make sense with your character and within the world um And like I said, just working with your DM to make it fit and still make it balanced. So, because, you know, this is still a game. Yeah, absolutely. Like, 
your background isn't going to be, I'm the highest level wizard ever at level one. <laughs> exactly. And so while you were talking, I just wrote down the equipment. Mm. Took 20 seconds. Yep. Just as a reminder, just to save us time later. later. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah. Step four. Yep. Choose your race slash lineage. So we already know it's a dwarf, but the reason I have it being a slash lineage is because it being, it used to be called race, but the D&D &D races are more like species. So I think it is a little bit problematic to call them races and it has been slowly moving into just it being called a lineage. <laughs> so you have the Dwarven lineage, you get these kinds of different traits and such. Yes, and we will say, and I wanted to point this out, that this is actively changing. Yes. It's still called races in a lot of the books, mm -hmm. but we're moving to lineage. And the reason for this, an example of this being problematic that I just got from the elf section is they're high elves that get plus one intelligence. Yes. Right? So every race will get some modifier to certain abilities. But then the drow or the dark elves get plus one charisma. Mm -hmm. So this implies that high elves are just inherently smarter. Yeah. And that's just weird. That can... <laughs> be very offensive mm -hmm. also just saying that elves are smarter than other races is, mm -hmm. you can other see why races, that's a problem the darker elves yeah. they're smarter than them mm -hmm. so that is can be problematic it is problematic and they're changing this into lineage where instead of saying you get plus yes. one intelligence you get plus one to any stat that mm -hmm. you choose it allows you to be a lot more flexible with as how you want to build it humans and humanoids are yes they're mm -hmm. very flexible and, I mean, look at humans. How different are yeah. all humans like, right? across the you're spectrum? You're really strong. I am not. Exactly. <laughs> and so, wanted to bring that up here. That's not how the, a lot of the books are yet. Yes. But that like is something... Like, the standard book still has the ability mm -hmm. score increases. So, feel free to use those ability scores. And says we just wanted to start the conversation <laughs> there. Yes. And so, we're on the dwarf page, mm -hmm. right? And we know Gimli is... A mountain dwarf specifically yes there it is. and so when we go through the dwarfs last time we here this is how I picked my name this is their suggestions the, yeah and then we if we move over uh, and you look at the dwarf traits there's the section in the book it's going to tell you what stats increase average age mm -hmm. their alignment their size. size speed and and any kind of like fancy features that they get, which mm -hmm. you could write down here well, in the features and traits. It is in the bottom right-hand corner of the first page of oh, the character right. sheet. that's right. This is a podcast sometimes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these just quickly and fill these in, right? Mm -hmm. And so my question to you is, so these are just dwarf traits. Yes. You add these in addition to your separates. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So since I'm a dwarf, I get plus two to constitution. Yep. And then since I'm a mountain dwarf, I also get plus two to strength. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Sub races are cool. That's very Sub cool. Sub lineage, I don't know, whatever. And <laughs> so now, like I have, we could look up Gimli's age. I don't actually know. I don't, I don't know either. He's like, <laughs> probably like 300 or something. Um, so I'm just going to put that at the top in the, uh, oh, it's actually on the second sheet of yes. the, uh, the car uh, player. I keep trying to say player handbook, but the <laughs> character sheet, at the very top of the second sheet, there's a place to write your character's name again, and then there's a box to the right that has age, height, weight, eyes, skin, hair. So the physical description. Yeah. So it looks like I already wrote that he is 112 years old. Did you look that up? No. Okay. I just like, that seems good. Uh, pretty well experienced mm -hmm. dwarf. Uh, and then four sticks, 155 pounds. Yeah. Uh, good, so that's his age, mm -hmm. alignment, um, we'll talk, we'll get into the nuances of talk alignment, about alignment later. he's generally <laughs> an awful good, good character. Yeah. Um, maybe chaotic good. We'll he's see. good. He's good. I'm going <laughs> to write a good character. Neutral good? Nah, he's pretty good. And then <laughs> size, we already did that. I mm -hmm. filled that in. And then speed, this is really important because this is mechanically for yes. when combat happens. Mm -hmm. So at speed here says 25. So there is the box right below the uh, race where you fill in your race and alignment just below that in the middle of the sheet there's a box that says speed so i'm going to write that 25 and that means briefly that i can move five squares mm -hmm. in combat move the 20. move the piece yep mm -hmm. and the standard movement speed for most 
humanoids is 30, but since dwarves and gnomes and halflings are smaller, their little legs can't can't go as fast, yeah. so they're like 25. <laughs> and then we have dark vision, which I already wrote. Mm -hmm. Just And then I wrote the page as a reminder, yes. so we can keep moving. Then I have dwarven resilience, which is... Which says you have advantage on saving throws against poison, and you have resistance against poison damage. So I will say... It's like they're made out of rocks or something. So for me, <laughs> just real quickly, I'm, I'm just going to write resistance to poison, right? Yes. That's not exactly what it is, but it gives me a reminder. So when poison happens, oh, what, what, yeah. what did that You can remember, work? look at your page, go back mm -hmm. to the book. And so then dwarf combat train. You have proficiency with the battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and war hammer. Meaning if I use these to attack... I will add my proficiency bonus mm -hmm. to a, when I try to hit something. So I'm going to put those in the other proficiency slash languages mm -hmm. box down in the left-hand corner. These proficiencies are also good if, like, if you're in a different class, like a caster who doesn't have proficiencies to these kind of martial weapons. If you're a dwarf, now you do. <laughs> and then what do I get for being a mountain dwarf? You get uh, the ability score increased to your strength. Okay, I'm going to note that mm -hmm. i'm just going to put that plus two there as and a reminder. you have dwarven armor training which means you have proficiency in light and medium armor okay in addition to being a fighter which you have proficiency in all kinds of armor <laughs> but like i said it's just in case like you're not a fighter or you uh, your class like you're mm -hmm. a wizard who has no proficiencies in armor now you do okay so <laughs> that's what the lineage get yes. gave us right so now Time for some numbers, I think. Now it's time for the numbers. Ability, ability score, scores. step five. So, ability scores determine just about everything mm -hmm. about what we do. And so, I'll say here, steps five and six are probably going to be some of the most important, important yes. steps. I'm going to take up a bit of time, yep. but these ability scores are on the left-hand side of the first part page of the player sheet. There are six boxes pertaining to the six different abilities and abilities the way that I think of them is the game tried to mechanically represent everything we do in mm -hmm. real life. The actual attributes. So the just to list them off and we'll go through each of them. There are three physical stats which are strength, dexterity, and constitution. And then and the three mental which is intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. We need strength to lift things. We need dexterity to be balanced. We need constitution to not get sick we need intelligence to read and wisdom to be, be aware, in, be of, our aware of our surroundings and mm -hmm. charisma to talk to people mm -hmm. so this is their best attempt to represent the things we do in everyday life yes. right and these each of these stats can range from on the average stat for average person is 10 mm -hmm. and so anything that will give you zero modifier and and then stats will go up. The highest a player can have is 20. And the modifiers will go uh, will increase as those numbers go up. Yes. There's a chart that we talked about in the beginning of the book in the last episode. It's on page 13 mm -hmm. of the player's handbook. And if they go below that, you'll get some negative modifiers, meaning it's more meaning difficult. Meaning not that great at Not stuff. that great at that. But these are used for everything. Literally They're, everything. They Just are like a used for ability checks, skill checks, saving throws, armor, initiative, attack bonus, right? Mm -hmm. And... Just a little bit of everything. Okay, so let me go through the physical ones, yes. and you'll go through the mental ones. Mm -hmm. So we have strength. You put here, pretty obvious. <laughs> but it's your natural athleticism and your bodily power. It measures how strong your character is, how hard they hit with weapons, how much they can lift. And then you said, the more jacked your character is, the Did higher the number. Funny. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> then we have dexterity. How are you? <laughs> Physical agility, reflexes, balance, poise. It's used to determine how stealthy you are, how well you're able to dodge, which is why this modifier is applied to your armor class, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and we'll get there. And then how quick you are in combat, the uh, initiative, yes. right? That is applied to initiative, which is the order of people on combat unfolds. So mm -hmm. if you're more dexterous, you often go, go quicker, quicker mm -hmm. in combat. And then you have constitution. This is your health, stamina, and vital force. The higher the score, the more health you will have. So meaning it's good for every yes. single character. <laughs> uh, and, and since it's a game, this is your hit points. And if you fall to zero, knocks you out. Okay. 
and then when you roll for your hit points, you'll add this directly to get a high, this modifier direct or penalty. You can yeah. actually get low health if you have lower constitution. Try not to do that. So what are the uh, mental? The mm. mental scores are intelligence, which is your mental acuity, your information recall, and your analytical skills. So it's like I, like you said, the standard is 10. And if you go below that, it doesn't mean you're not intelligent. Yeah. It just means it's harder for you to recall things. You might not be that great at researching, and that's okay. Yeah, and I really wanted to uh, linger here a yes, little bit. Yes, the little caveat. Humans have tried relentlessly to have a single number quantify your intelligence, and that's not how it works. No, it's, it's like very, the IQ thing. The IQ mm -hmm. is very offensive, and people are way more complex than that. Yes. So. I want to point out here that if your character's stat falls below 10, that's okay. That doesn't mean they lack the ability for creativity or intellig or understanding. intelligent feats or understanding, general understanding. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean they're just dumb, right? Like it we, just, it's harder for I them to I use that to, word to not learn. to be offensive, but I use that because that's how a lot of people yeah. think about mm -hmm. it. It's like, no, we want to remove that from the discussion. It's just, it might be more difficult for them. And they might shine in other ways. They yes. will shine in they other ways. They absolutely will. Like my, one of my characters has six intelligence. He doesn't always understand But he has like big max words, wisdom. <laughs> but he's really wise. He's really aware of his surroundings. He can sense the, how people are feeling. Mm -hmm. He has high charisma. And so he shines in, as a leader mm -hmm. because of that. And he has smart people with him. Yes. Right? So I wanted to touch on that there. Next, like we just talked about, is wisdom, which is your awareness, intuition, and insight. Um, a person could be very book smart, but not wise about the world. So that's high wisdom, low intelligence. Or wait, no, the reverse. Anyway, so wisdom is all about your, your instincts, like mm -hmm. your willpower mm -hmm. and just being aware of your surroundings. So they, these two kind of get fuddled in intelligence and wisdom because people aren't sure how to role play them differently. Like if you have high intelligence, but low wisdom, how do you do that? And it's just like, you're very book smart, but you might not be super aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. And the reverse, high wisdom. In a way that it's been explained to me is you might not yes. understand what to do with all of that information. Mm -hmm. You might not know how to use it. And an example that I really liked is the tomato example. Mm -hmm. And there's one for each stat, right? Yeah. Strength, you can chuck it fast. <laughs> no, you Dex can squish it. You, you can squish tomato. it. You can chuck it far, as far as. And dexterity, you can dodge. Mm -hmm. Constitution, you can eat rotten ones and not be affected. <laughs> but intelligence is more so. You know what that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is you know not to put tomatoes in a fruit salad. Yes. Right? <laughs> so you know that, distinct, that distinction. And then to finish the analogy, charisma means you can sell that You're tomato. You're going to sell tomato. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back to charisma, it's used in most social settings. It's your confidence, your eloquence, your leadership. It's used for persuading people, for deceiving people, for intimidating mm -hmm. people, and performing. Yeah. <laughs> it's what bards use, and a lot of socialites, they use it to get what they want and what they need. So having low charisma just means you're not that great at talking to people. You might be kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. And then having high charisma means... You're really popular. <laughs> yeah. And it's... Um, Usually. You're good at negotiating is something. Yes. Or like Gimli might be lower on the Christmas side because he's so brash. He's so brash. <laughs> right? He's very confident. But that can only he get can you so far. Be, he can just be rude and he can mm -hmm. just say, blurt out what's on his mind. Yep. And that, that can be a representation of low charisma. Mm -hmm. But how do we determine these scores? There are some fun ways to determine ability scores. There are three in the book and one... The, there is the standard array of numbers that they give you, which is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. And you plug those six numbers into these different scores, however you feel best represents your character. Mm -hmm. And then the yeah. other two. Oh, we're done with another sheet. Oh, we are. Nice. There we go. <laughs> I was like, that's not where it is. There is the point by system, which... Each number from 8 to 15 has a cost, and you get 27 points you use to buy them, which is on still on page 13. And you do that, and then you still take those numbers and plug them in. Mm -hmm. But my favorite method is rolling dice. And this is the one that I did on the last episode. This is that. where you roll four 
d6s, so four six-sided dice, and then you choose the highest three, add them together, and then you do that six times, and that will be your six numbers. So my six numbers, as a reminder, were 10, 9, 15, 15, 14, 10. So kind of average. Pretty nothing, average, but, nothing crazy, but two but, that are really good. But since there's some higher numbers, I can think about, okay, what does my class need? What would Gimli be good at? And, and your lineage gives you ability score imp increases mm -hmm. so that you can add those to the numbers and decide what what's more important Absolutely. and what can be increased. Okay. So we're going to do that. Let's fill in this character sheet. Step six, using the numbers. Using the numbers, <laughs> Fun filling stuff. in the character sheet. Let's do it. And I like what you put here. D&D is basically just fun with sparkly number rocks. Sparkly math rocks. <laughs> you have hundreds. Of I have so many. So many. I've definitely <laughs> contributed. I love dice. <laughs> okay, so what is a the primary abilities? What are these? Well, let me go back to the thing. So the primary primary abilities um, are stated on page forty five uh, for each class. So the primary abilities for a fighter is strength or dexterity. It's just what you want to focus on. So for a Gimli fighter, he's focusing on strength. Okay, so that means. And you want a high number. With your primary stat, you essentially want that to be your highest or up there, right? Mm -hmm. Or second highest, because that's where you're going to be using to do what your class is good at. So for me, I'm going to take a 15, put that into strength, but I have a plus two from being a dwarf, so that will make it a 17. Okay. So yes, on the the each character each class has a quick build option, which tells you what to make your highest. It says. First, make strength or dexterity the highest, depending on what you want to focus on. Next, it should be constitution. Okay, so I should or put, intelligence. So I um, should put my fifteen in constitution. That makes sense. Yes. Gimli can keep fighting all day. It's gonna be. It's he gonna gets be more tough. kills than Legolas. <laughs> so I'm gonna take. Hey. Go ahead and put that other fifteen there, which will also become a seventeen, because because being a dwarf, right? You're hardy. You're more. You're sturdy. Okay, so I take got hits. rid of those fifteens. So now let's think about these other stats here. I would. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the 14 in Wisdom. Mm. I think he is very wise. He's lived a long time. Yep. He's seen a lot. And just the idea of like, He's very aware. here's my axe. I'm going to help these hobbits because we need to save the world. Yes. Like, he, there was no doubt in his mind mm -mm. that this is what needed to be done and that he could trust He inside checked Frodo and yep. was like, I believe in that I got boy. you. So <laughs> now I have two tens and a nine. And a nine. So, so I, I think I'm going to go ahead and put that nine in charisma. Absolutely, yeah. yes. I was about to say that. And then I'll put the tens here, and we have our stats. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do now is... Put in the modifiers. Put in the modifiers. So if you're looking again, at the boxes, some people will do this differently. There's, there's the big box and a small circle. Some people will put the stat in the small circle and then the modifier in the big one. Some people will flip it. I like to put the stat in the big box and then the modifier in that small yes. one. Yes. So we go back to page 13, and it tells you the ability score modifiers for each number. So for 17, you get a plus 3. So anything that uses strength. Mm -hmm. You, you get, get plus, plus three. 3 to the roll that you make with the d20. Awesome. awesome. Dexterity. So 10, it is plus 0. You okay. get no modifier. All right. So same thing with your intelligence. Sure. And so... And then constitution is also a plus another 3. Another plus 3. What about 14 for my wisdom? 14 um, is plus 2. 14 and 15. So these go uh, by... By twos, mm -hmm. so I'm okay. not gonna go through all that. And then charisma. Charisma, so nine. You now you start getting so in the negatives. So this is my penalty. Eight and nine get a minus one. I can see getting like getting minus Absolutely. one and the charisma, <laughs> right? And so now we have our stats. This mm -hmm. is what's gonna determine everything else and f start filling these boxes. Yes. And so if we go back to the fighter class, something we forgot to put in. Um, go back, going back to the. Thing is putting in the saving throw well, proficiency. Well, it's because we're not to the saving throws yet. Oh, okay. I was just thinking about when we were on the class. <laughs> <laughs> we're we'll going over to you. Okay. Well, okay. Whatever. That's true. Well, let's, let's do it right now. Anyway. Let's talk about saving throws, right? Yes. So a saving throw is a special kind of check that make... Uh, that one makes when a spell or ability calls for it. It's basically to save from. So like someone shoots a fireball at you, you make a dexterity saving throw to see if you, see can, if you can jump, jump out, of, out, the out way of the way. And take say. less damage. <laughs> and so you said here that the fighter, and this will be in every class section, yes. it'll so tell you what saving throws you have, and that means you're proficient in mm -hmm. them. So you add your proficiency bonus and such. So the saving throws for fighter are strength and constitution. So I'm going to fill in which strength. Is good because they're your highest. Constitution. Awesome. 
And that's really cool. That's and you typically, makes sense because those are my highest stats. Yeah, you typically don't get more than two proficiencies in saving throws. It's very rare. Mm-hmm. And so you, that's it. Like you said, you only have those two saving throws. But we keep talking about this proficiency. Thing. Yes. I think it's really important that we rewind a little, touch on this proficiency, because we've been saying it how many times in this uh, episode? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> so let's get to that. What is the proficiency? So it's something that you're proficient in. It's something that you're good at, something that you are trained in. So on page 15, it goes through the character advancement and explains, somewhere on here, explains the proficiency bonus and how it increases as you level up. So mm-hmm. level one, your proficiency bonus is plus two. Okay. So that so. means anything that you are proficient in when you roll to use a check a skill ability thing, you're adding the plus two. Okay, so if I roll this, my d20, yes. when they told me to make a roll, mm-hmm. I roll it and to like make a strength check. Okay, so I'm proficient in it. So I get 12? No, you would add your strength plus modifier three. And, and proficiency, proficiency. Bonus. So that it would be plus 15. five? Yep. Holy cow, I'm strong. Uh-huh. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. So just put a plus so I'm two So I'm going to put a plus two. And this is the small box just to the right of the strength mm-hmm. strength box. That's just above saving throws. Just above saving throws. That's plus two. And then, and I think with that, we're ready to you're, start filling You're ready things. to fill in all we're the other numbers. We're starting to fill things in. Okay, so let's go to the top down so inspiration this is something that your dm will give you if you're playing well yes if you're role playing playing well yeah uh, or they think you are doing what makes sense for your character and if you get inspiration you're allowed to that to make yourself better at something one time Mm -hmm. by giving yourself advantage which means you roll 2d20 you take the higher result so that is not something we do that's something that you as the dm would give us but that's not something we put on the page we don't care about it right now we don't care about it proficiency we already Mm-hmm. Did that. that. So now we're going to the saving throw boxes. I already filled in the two bubbles, the ones I'm proficient in, and now I'm going to go top down. So the strength one, you already you said. You add in your modifier. Which is plus three. And the pro- the proficiency bonus. Okay, so, so that's... So you get a plus five, plus five for strength saving throws. Dexterity, I am not proficient in, and I have zero, so, so I'm just zero. zero. <laughs> Constitution. Same thing with the strength. So plus five. Intelligence is a zero. Mm-hmm. Wisdom, I'm not proficient, but I do have plus two in, so that's a plus two. In the charisma, charisma, minus minus one. one. (laughs) And so whenever you see that stat, strength, dex, constitute, intelligence, wisdom, look for the modifier to the left of these in these stats Mm -hmm. to add that. So now let's get to the skills. There are 18 of these skills that rely on these ability scores. You do the same thing that we did with the saving throws, mm -hmm. what you're proficient in. We'll go back to fighter because you have more skills. So each class will give you a, a number of skills to choose from to be proficient in. Oh, yeah. So you get to choose two. I get to choose two. From, and, yeah. And from my background, I was already proficient in athletics and intimidation. So this says I can choose two from acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, and survival. You can so already cross out athletics. Yep, since you can already, already have cross those. out intimidation. So what makes sense for gambling? Survival, I would say. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, we'll fill that bubble in. And probably history, if I'm being honest, because he he knows a lot. He does. He's, he's been very a, he's lived yeah, around for he's a while. a very lived dwarf. So mm-hmm. I fill in those bubbles. I have those proficiencies. Now we can go down the skill block and start filling these numbers in. And so what you'll see uh, next to the abilities. In, Abil- uh, skills on the sheet, they'll have the ability score that coincides with it. Yeah, just in parentheses, they'll have the acronym. So acrobatics yes. says parentheses dex. That means I'm going to add my dex modifier, which is zero. Mm-hmm. And I'll go down the, the line on each of these. So animal handling, wisdom, so that's plus two. Arcana, intellect, that's zero. Athletics, strength, and proficient, plus so that's five. plus five. That's awesome. Deception, charisma. Minus one. I'm not good at lying. Nah, and Kinley don't lie. History. He's he's boasting about not being drunk. History is zero, (laughs) but I'm proficient at it because I've lived a long life, so I get plus two. Insight is wisdom, so plus two. Intimidation, proficient, but I have a penalty. So So it would just be a plus two minus one, one, so I have plus (laughs) one, which is hilarious. And Mm -hmm. you're. you're going to go through these just like this for every character that you make. Yes. Investigation is intellect, so zero. Medicine is wisdom, plus two. Nature, intellect, 
So that's zero. Perception is wisdom plus two. Performance, <laughs> minus, minus one. one. I can perform, but you might not like. It might not be easy. <laughs> Persuasion. So let's just try. Yeah, it's minus fun. one. <laughs> Religion, is intellect at zero. Sleight of hand, not good at that. Stealth, I'm not very stealthy. Survival, I have the proficiency and plus two, so that's plus four. Mm -hmm. So now these are filled in. So whenever your DM says, Make a perception check. One of these 18 checks, mm -hmm. you will roll the d20, look for your perception, and then add that modifier. Mm -hmm. Add whatever the number says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, below that box, there is a box called passive wisdom. Yes. Yeah, passive wisdom and passive perception. It means, like, how aware are you from just wandering? Not making active perceptions, mm -hmm. not actively looking around. Yeah. That is 10 plus whatever your perception modifier is, so your wisdom modifier. So it is a plus two. So I have 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you were proficient in perception, you would add your proficiency bonus that to too. the passive okay. as well. Okay, that's good. That's mm -hmm. really good to know. So these stats, that was a lot. Yep. But these stats are used everything. They're going to dictate everything many, you do. How many rolls do you think a DM makes the players make in a session? <laughs> yeah. Anywhere from like 5 to 20. <laughs> so many. So many. And yeah, okay. So we talked about proficiency. Talked about saving throws. And our primary abilities, which we know is strength because I'm a fighter. Or dex, but I chose, mm -hmm. I chose strength. Another thing about proficiency uh, that you get with fighter, so Armor for proficiency. All armor and shields. Okay. Write weapons. That down. Simple weapons and martial weapons, which are all of them. Okay. <laughs> Tools, none. And then. Sure. Yes. And as a dwarf, you get languages. Oh, yeah. Which they were covered up. Oh, you actually get tool proficiencies. One set of. Oh, that was covered up. I put the sticky note in How the could place. you? <laughs> That's okay. Oh, wow, there's even more things. Stone cunning. Mm hmm. Whenever you make an intelligence history check related to the origin of stonework, you are considered proficient in history. That's awesome. Ah, so okay. you are already proficient. Anyway. Very cool. And then you get languages, which you're proficient in. You write common and dwarvish. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll fill this in. Mm -hmm. And we're at the bottom of the hour, so I think... We need to hurry up. Yeah. So we'll go One through... One more thing on proficiencies. Yep, yep. The weapon proficiencies you add to the attack bonus. Okay, so there's this attack thing. Right in the middle of the front page, there's attacks and spells. And so you're going to have the name, which I'm going to say is a battle axe. No, the great axe. The great axe, okay. Big. Great axe. I'll fill that in. Then the attack bonus is going to be strength plus proficiency, so plus five. So that means mm -hmm. when I make an attack, I use plus five to see if I hit. And then when you roll damage, it's 1d12, and okay. then you add your strength modifier. And so. Then, so I'll write that in the damage type. 1d12. Roll 1d12. Three plus five. Well, it's I mean, three plus, plus three. three. My bad. And then you can roll, write the damage type because it'll say on this chart yes. on page. Yes. Uh, slashing. One forty nine slashing. Cool. Okay. All right. Now, what is this armor class? I'm looking at? So, as a fighter, you get from your starting equipment. What armor do you get? You get chainmail okay. or leather armor, but. Gimli's wearing chainmail. Yeah, he's wearing chainmail. Which means your armor class is 16. Yes, back to this equipment page. This will be really helpful for 145 these pages. 145 to 149. Yes. And so what does that say? So chainmail is uh, your armor class is 16. You need to have a strength of at least 13 I to wear that. it. got <laughs> And you have disadvantage on stealth. Okay. So, so you would put uh, 16 here. And because I don't have any dexterity. And also the chainmail just doesn't uh, okay. add a dexterity modifier. So bars. 16, that means anytime someone tries to hit me. They have to roll a 16 or greater. Yeah. Okay, and then what is the initiative? Initiative is your dexterity bonus, so you have zero. <laughs> All right. So whatever you roll for initiative, that's what it is. Okay. Did I roll? Okay, that was a three. I thought it was a All 20. Right. <laughs> Current hit points. This oh, is also boy. from the fighters section. Yes. This, this, and remember, 
you're going to be referring to the book a lot. You're going to be going around. Mm -hmm. So what you might have seen for our viewers is we have sticky notes on the pages that we're yes. going to be using. I have on the dwarf page, the fire page, and the equipment. Mm -hmm. The three pages we're going to be bouncing around. Oh, yes. and the and soldier and such. Yeah, and the background. So those are the four pages we're going to be bouncing around. Between. So to determine hit points, you have hit dice which for fighter is 1d10 per level. So it's just 1d10, which you write okay. right under, or right above Yeah, so the there's attacks. a box right in the middle of the page that has current hit points, temporary hit points, then hit dice. So hit dice, I have one. D10. D10, mm -hmm. so I'll write that there. And then hit points at first level is 10 plus your constitution modifier. So my maximum hit points is 13. Mm -hmm. My current hit points is 13, because we haven't fought yet. Yes. And then whenever you level up, you either take the standard, which is the six, or you can roll a d10 and then add your constitution modifier to that and add that total to your starting health okay. to increase your health as you level up because you're getting stronger. Okay, so seems like we got a lot filled in. Oh. Got a few minutes, but we, let's touch on the class things. We yes. won't go into details, but... In the features and traits box on the bottom right hand corner of the sheet, this is where you're going to write little reminders of what your class can do. So, so for example, a fighter has get, a fighting yes. style. So, <laughs> for Gimli, that is great weapon fighting. The other options are archery, defense, dueling, protection, and two weapon fighting. And But Gimli mostly uses his big great axe, at least in the movie. Yep, and then as you level up, you get new features and I like to write little reminders or blurbs so I don't always have to go to the book. But mm -hmm. if you're like, I don't remember exactly how that was worded, don't feel bad going back to yeah, the book. And that's why I write the page number. So page 72. 72. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so I think this is a usable character. The only thing left to add is the equipment you get from your class. Oh, perfect. So we already did the chain mail. Chain mail. You get a martial weapon, which we have already chosen already for chose the great, great axe. axe. And then you get two hand axes. Two hand axes. You also get options in here, so you can either and be again, a And again, I will go to the equipment page mm -hmm. to fill in with hand axes stats. And then you can either do a Dungeoneer's pack or Explorer's pack. And for Gimli, he's a Dungeoneer. Yeah. Which is on page 151. Okay. So that's filled in mm -hmm. and that's step six using the numbers we said step five and step six are going to take the oh, yeah. most time and it sure did <laughs> so all right we're gonna have to speed seven. through step seven which is understanding your character mm -hmm. so you have all these numbers you have all these little blurbs you have the bookmarks just go through and read just just read okay and yeah, try yeah. To understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah read you should yeah <laughs> that's so fun <laughs> take time to absorb this mm -hmm. once it's all filled in yes that's good that's and fine and dandy, but take time so you know what your character is good at. What are your stats? Like, what am I going to be better at on average? Yeah, you have. What these are my personality reminders. traits? Mm -hmm. So you are in the session. You're not having to go back to the paper constantly because that can take you out of the role. Yeah. Play. That can take you out of the game. So get familiar with these things. Yeah. Try the to more familiar you are with your own character will just help so much for your DM mm -hmm. so they don't have to keep track yes. of that for you. And it'll help you have more fun if like, wait. You can get invested. <laughs> wait, I have this spell for this perfect thing. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Okay, cool, cool. Or like, We've had examples where we forgot we had a spell and we okay. wasted hours because we <laughs> yep. weren't familiar. We're like, oh man, I'm so bad at this. Mm -hmm. So take time to understand your character more deeply. What are, get really Both familiar. mechanically and emotionally, being mm -hmm. able to step into your character's personality will yep. help role-playing a lot. Absolutely. And then the last step here, step eight, this is the fluff. Yeah, this is just cosmetics. What do you want to look like? What do you want to look like? What, how tall? How short? And what this does Gimli is the, look like? This is essentially the second sheet of the page. This is for you. We focused a lot on mechanics today, but this is for you, right? What is your appearance? There's a box how to draw. You? How old are you? What's your character's backstory? Mm -hmm. It what just doesn't have to do mm -hmm. with the, the background. The, what treasure yeah. do you have? What mm -hmm. additional features do you have? Who are you Things allied like with? Absolutely. So this is for you, and this will also help you fleshing out your character getting more accustomed to them. Whew. All right, we have to speed through the outro. That was a lot. What kind of character do you want to make good. next? <laughs> oh, what kind of character? I'm making Gimli. I just made it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what kind of character do you want to make next? I want to make some kind of sorcerer because I like magic, yeah. and sorcerers are just really cool because they're just, like, born with this innate with this magic. Innate magic. I don't like wizards. Okay. I don't like studying. <laughs> you don't like spending money. You have to learn spells. That, too. 
Whew. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Well, that was a mood change. Yeah, that was. Sorry. We've got a minute left here. We'll <laughs> wrap it up. But I really hope this helped all of you. I know it kind of got a little rushed there at the end, but I, I hope this serves as a guide in these eight steps. You can help guide you at making your character. Mm -hmm. But as we wrap up, uh, please send us any questions or any characters you liked. Maybe we'd love to read about yes. it at Shared Discovery Show at Gmail, even on Instagram or in the comments on YouTube. Thank you for BCTV for having us once again. Mm -hmm. And as we go, uh, we'd just like to say thank you for joining us on episode 29 of Shared Discovery. Make sure you have some fun, be kind to others, and of course, play some game, play some D&D. &D. Play D&D, &D, it's And the best. sign us out. You know, take care, <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one. I don't have a sign see, off thing, bye. That's good, bye. <laughs> <laughs> we did it.